Where is the best place to live in Victoria, BC? Is it here, 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 or here, 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 or here? Greater Victoria is made up of 13 different municipalities that each have their own unique qualities, and the 400,000 people that call Southern Vancouver Island home choose to live in different places for different reasons. Today, we're gonna tour from Sydney all the way to Souk and give you a six point rating scale to determine what the best place to live in Greater Victoria is. Be sure to stick around to the end because I'm actually gonna ask locals what their preference is. Let's roll. To kick off our tour today, we've driven to the tip of the Sandwich Peninsula in the seaside town of Sydney. Now, in thinking about this video, I wanted to come up with six broad categories that would capture most of what people are looking for in neighborhoods, while also slipping in some objective truths with my own subjective opinions. As a local of Victoria, I certainly think a certain kind of way about different areas, and this list may differ for different people, but hopefully it gives you a better understanding of where's where, what's what, and what areas are best for you. The first of those categories is something that Sydney by the Sea does quite well. That's beauty and appeal. Now that could be neighborhood aesthetics and how nicely kept the homes are in an area. It could be cleanliness, or it could be natural beauty. All of those three things come together really nicely in a beautiful seaside community here in Sydney. That's probably the best and cutest package that you'll find in Greater Victoria. All of this shoreline along the east side, looking out towards Sydney Island and San Juan Island, corresponding ferries that will get you out there. Lots and lots of natural boardwalks and walkways along the seaside and a beautifully kept downtown core with quaint cafes and restaurants to suit your needs. I give Sydney an eight on the beauty and appeal scale. The second category is transit and walkability. How easy is it to get around by foot, by bike, by bus? And how easy is it to get in and out of Sydney? I would say that the proximity of amenities to the neighborhoods is great here. You have a walk score of 51, a bike score of 65, and you get bonus points because you're super close to the BC Ferries Terminal as well as Victoria International Airport. And getting down to Victoria is a breeze because you just take the Pat Bay Highway all the way down. Sydney gets a nine on transit and walkability. The third category is affordability. This specifically relates to real estate purchase prices and how they fared so far in 2023. The way that I pitted neighborhoods against each other was I actually took the median in each segment, so detached townhomes and condos, so far in 2023. I averaged those out, which spits out a total number, which is a way of somewhat determining how expensive those areas are. Sydney is actually on the more affordable end of the spectrum, but I had to tweak this slightly because there's a really strong condo market here, especially for the retirees that are looking for two bedrooms. For that reason, it makes it less approachable for a first time buyer, but all the same, the detached home prices are not as severe here as they are in the city of Victoria. I believe so far in 2023, they came in at a million 42,000. So for that reason, Sydney's right about in the middle here at a four and a half. The fourth category is crime and safety, which is largely contributed to by StatsCan's crime severity index rankings that collect data from local municipal police forces on the frequency and severity of each call. Sydney got a 48, which is actually higher than I would have expected in 2021, which is the most recent data available. And for that reason, it gets a six. Fifth category is schools and services, services being Things like professional services, whether you need a lawyer or accountant, also could be healthcare practitioners, physiotherapists, dentists. Nearest hospital is important to this category, as well as a major transit hub like an airport or a ferry terminal. The way that I gathered info about schools was actually looking at the latest Fraser Institute rankings and then averaging the total of those scores. Now, Sydney doesn't have a lot of schools, but the ones that exist are good. That's the first number that you see here. And in total, because of the scope of services available, Sandwich Peninsula Hospital being quite nearby and the ferry terminal and airport being right around the corner, Sydney gets an eight. The final category is activities and attractions. What are the things to do here year round that would make you want to stay in this neighborhood? Sydney has a lot of great things going for it. Although it is a little bit touristy, you can take a stroll down Beacon Avenue and take in all the great shop stores and new restaurants and quaint cafes that it has on offer. A lot of the activities are focused on the sea, maybe getting down to the boat launch, taking a ferry across to one of the US Gulf Islands, or just getting out on the water on your own from any one of the number of beaches that line the coast here in Sydney. There's great parks here. Tulista Park is one of my favorites. They've got a sand beach volleyball court, as well as a great playground and skate park. 
And overall, it's really just about what's going on on Beacon Ave, spending a Sunday afternoon down here with your family and taking it all in. For that reason, I give Sydney a seven, which brings us up to a total tally of 42.5. Let's see how that shakes out versus the other municipalities in Victoria. Just over to the west from Sydney and we're here in North Saanich, which is one of my favorites for natural beauty, which is again, our first category. We're here at the northernmost point of the Saanich Peninsula with all of the Saanich Inlet over and behind me here to the west. Come on, this is a beautiful spot. There's acreage throughout, lots of rolling hillsides, Horth Hill Regional Park and Deep Cove are some of my favorite spots and North Saanich gets an eight on natural beauty. Here we are on one of North Saanich's busier roads on Downey Road at a bus stop. And transit and walkability here is not great, if I'm being honest. You have a walk score of five, a bike score of 20. There's not a lot of buses going to and from or getting you close to services here. The saving grace is that we are close to BC Ferries and the airport, but on the whole, there's not great walkability and this is a car only type neighborhood. Transit and walkability, what kind of score am I gonna give it? We'll say two. How's housing affordability in North Saanich? Well, there's not a lot of variety, that's for sure. There have been less than 10 total condo and townhouse sales in the whole district so far in 2023. And of the homes that have sold in the detached variety, the median sale price is north of $1.5 million. For that reason, I give North Saanich a one. Is it safe in North Saanich? Well, there's not a lot of density, not a lot going on. And as a consequence, not a lot of crime in North Saanich. At one time, this was considered one of the safest places in all of British Columbia. And as of 2021, the crime severity index ranking was 33, which is among the best in Greater Victoria. Welcoming community, friendly people. It's a nine for me. The schools are better than the services in North Saanich. And the latest Fraser Institute rankings gave each school more than five on their rating scale. Although residents out here in North Saanich find that for services, they have to drive all the way into Sydney to get things that they need. For that reason, it gets a four. What is there to do up here? Well, the activities and attractions in North Saanich largely focus around activities on the water, like here at Deep Cove Marina, a great place for moorage. You can also get out on a paddleboard or kayak from any one of the number of beaches and coves that line the coast here on the Saanich Inlet. But there's other notable places to walk and hike, like Horth Hill Park, golf at Ardmore, or even get up to Deep Cove Chalet for one of the most refined dining experiences in all of Victoria or across the street at Deep Cove Winery. There are a few attractions, not a ton, but for the few that are great, I give this a five. North Saanich is tranquil and beautiful, but it doesn't have the broad spectrum of services that everyone is looking for in a community. And for that reason, it gets a 29. Up next, we've got Central Saanich, which is flanked by two sections of coastline, one in behind me here on the Saanich Inlet in Brentwood Bay, and over on the east section of the Saanich Peninsula by the Harrow Strait. Beautiful pastoral farms, lovely sections of rolling hills, dense forest, a lot of variety, which I absolutely love. And then of course, sheltered bays like this at Brentwood Bay, coastal communities. Beauty and appeal here is very, very good. And I'm gonna give it a 7.5. Transit and walkability in Central Saanich are pretty good, although I will say that because it's more sparsely populated than some of the other urban centers in Victoria, if you don't live right in the heart of Brentwood Bay or near Saanich Tin Village, the walkability and bikeability are not as good. We do have the Pat Bay Highway running dead through the center of this municipality, which means getting in and out is very easy and getting to transit or downtown is that much easier. But with that said, I believe the walk score here is about 44. Bike score is about a 36. It's definitely better in some spots than others. And if you're way out in a more rural setting in Central Saanich, it's not as easy to get around. For that reason, I give it a six on transit and walkability. Affordability here in Central Saanich, just slightly better than the average that you'd see in Greater Victoria. That detached median coming in just south of $1.2 million so far this year. And with condos at a median of 550, it's reasonably affordable, but it's really not too far off from the middle of prices in Victoria. For that reason, we give it a five and a half. Is it safe in Central Saanich? Yep. Its crime severity index ranking in 2021 was 34, which is among the best in Greater Victoria. It's a nine on crime and safety. 
The primary and secondary schools in Central Saanich are actually rated quite well, but the services maybe leave something to be desired. Because little towns like Brentwood Bay have less than 5,000 people, the total scope of services might not be everything that you're looking for, and for that reason, it ends up at a 6.5 on my rating scale. Activities and attractions in Central Saanich likely favor tourists a little bit more than locals, and they just aren't places you'd visit every weekend. But all the same worth mentioning, of course, you have the world famous Butchart Gardens, which has been in bloom for more than a hundred years and is a national historic site. Tourists from around the world flock to see the famous Butchart Gardens. You also have great spots to check out like Church and State Winery to maybe grab a sample or two or four. And even the Butterfly Gardens just up the road from us here. But beyond that, off the beaten track, great natural places to visit like Island View Beach, as well as hiking through Gal and Todd Provincial Park down to the Todd Inlet, great hikes and walks. For me, I would call it a seven on the activities and attractions. You can't miss the Saanich Fair, of course. And that brings us up to a total of 41.5 for Central Saanich. We've gone from north to central to Saanich, which is the most populous municipality in all of Greater Victoria. On a beauty and appeal scale, this is one of the best. There's so much green space in Saanich. The municipality really respects trees, open space for people to enjoy, and great places to visit with your family, like here at Elk Lake Regional Park. There's great lakes. There's tons of shoreline from Cordova Bay all the way down to Cabra Bay. And for that reason, I give Saanich an eight. Because Saanich is so big, transit and walkability are better in some places than others, like here in Royal Oak, where you can walk to shopping and amenities. Other parts of Saanich that are more sparsely populated means the walkability is not there, but on the whole, it's pretty good. Between the bike score, walk score, and transit score, it ranges between 40 to 56. So Saanich gets a six. Affordability is okay. There are some select neighborhoods in Saanich that are some of the most expensive in all of Greater Victoria, but there's also a wide variety and some approachable neighborhoods. The median of a detached home in 2023 comes in just over 1.2 million, but really Saanich is right in the middle because of that variety, so I give it a four. It's pretty hard to feel unsafe, although there could be a cougar running through here in the woods in Broadmead. But Saanich is pretty sparsely populated. There's not a lot of huge concentrations of people and consequently, crime is not very severe. The latest CSI was 48 and I give Saanich a six. The schools in Saanich are good, although there is a lot of variability. There's good private school options and public school options, but in some spots it's a bit hit or miss. As far as services goes, we're incredibly central here and you have pretty much everything you need especially when it's centered in one of these village cores, like in Broadmead or in Cabra Bay, there's usually a concentration of commercial density that gives you everything that you need in a nice concise package. For that reason, Saanich gets a seven. Saanich is all about the great outdoors. If you love being outside and being active, this is the place to do it. There's more than 170 parks, 100 kilometers of green space, the best beach in all of Greater Victoria at Cabra Bay Beach. Although I say it's all about the green space, there are other amenities like Uptown Shopping Center with all the modern shopping conveniences you would expect in a major city. Saanich is great and it's an 8.5 on the activities front. Overall, that brings us up to 39.5. Stop is View Royal, which I don't think it's nearly as much credit as it deserves from Victorians. I think because we find ourselves driving through View Royal, rather than actually spending some time in some of these little pockets and taking in how picturesque it actually is. Because we're on the Esquimalt Harbor and at the northernmost point of it, there's all these private sheltered little coves and beaches that are extremely beautiful. You also have Thetis Lake Regional Park on the other side of the highway. But between those two things and the fact that I think there is some better shoreline on offer in Greater Victoria, it gets a six on the beauty and appeal scale for me. Transit and walkability, not so good. The main negative is that this community does straddle Highway 1. That means at the start and end of business day for anyone commuting from View Royal or from the West Shore into Victoria and vice versa, that can really get jammed up. The saving grace is that you do have the Galloping Goose Regional Trail for all the cyclists among you that does offer some convenience. But for those main commercial centers, there isn't a ton of residential development around them, which means there's not a lot of walkability from your neighborhood to services in View Royal. We have a walk score of 28, a bike score of 51, but I would say a three on transit and walkability. View Royal is ever so slightly on the more affordable end of the spectrum. 
And in 2023 so far, the detached median comes in just shy of $1.1 million. There's still some pretty good value to be had in this community, especially if you're looking for a newer home. For that reason, I place it at a six on the affordability scale. View Royal comes in with a crime severity index ranking in 2021 of 61, which is actually a bit higher than I would have expected. Many of these neighborhoods are quite sleepy, quiet, and safe, but there are a few isolated pockets you may wish to avoid. Make sure you reach out to someone that knows how to point those spots out. So for me, I would say it's a four and a half on the crime and safety rating. The schools in View Royal come in in the middle of the road, but the services available are actually quite good. There's two concentrations of commercial development in View Royal. One is here at Eagle Creek Shopping Center and the other is at Admiral's Walk, where you'll find pretty much everything that you need. Now, there's a great quality foods here. And of course, right across the street, we have Victoria General Hospital. So on that account, service is pretty good. School's okay. It shakes out at a seven. There are some great activities and attractions in View Royal. Probably the best is access to Thetis Lake Regional Park in behind me. Highland Pacific Golf is also a great golf course. And of course you do have access to the waterfront down south of the Old Island Highway. For me, maybe there's not as much on the restaurants, cafes, things to do that you would normally head into Victoria to find. So I'm gonna give it a six, which brings us to a total of 32.5. Now we're in the township of Esquimalt, one of these beautiful communities on the southern coastline of Greater Victoria, also the home of Canada's naval base at CFB Esquimalt. To me, the beauty and appeal of Esquimalt is a little bit mixed. There's some incredible vistas along the oceanfront, like here at Saks Point Park, but there's also kind of funny little commercial sections that are a little bit grungy, as well as the naval base itself. So because of that variety, I'm gonna give it a 6.5. Transit and walkability are great. We're close to downtown. There's lots of great bus routes that operate frequently. You're close to amenities, especially down here in pockets around Esquimalt Plaza, like in the Saks Point and Rock Heights communities. And you have the e and bike trail running from here to downtown. You have a walk score of 51, a bike score of 63. I give Esquimalt an 8.5. Affordability is pretty good. This is one of the only communities on our list today that has a median sale price of a detached home in Greater Victoria, under a million dollars so far in 2023. And considering that we're just 15 minutes to downtown Victoria, to me, that feels like a bit of a bargain. Condos and townhomes follow suit in a way, and Squimalt gets an eight on affordability. If you were growing up in Victoria 30 or 40 years ago, you might have been told that Squimalt was like the wrong side of the tracks and an unsafe place to live but that's not the case in its current form and it's actually one of the safer communities in all of Greater Victoria. The crime severity index ranking from 2021 came in at 45 and consequently it comes in at 6.5. The schools aren't very well rated but there are some unique offers like here at Ecole Victor Brodeur which is one of the only French language schools in Greater Victoria. The services are great and you have lots of amenities at Esquimalt Plaza or Admiral's Walk but on the whole the schools do bring us down to a 5.5. Activities and attractions here are fantastic. We have some of the best parks in all of Greater Victoria, like the storied Esquimalt Gorge Park, Macaulay Point Park, or here with the unparalleled natural beauty of Saks Point Park. The other thing I love about living here, yes, I am an Esquimalt resident, is the community events and vibrancy of the area. You have Rib Fest, Jazz Fest, and Buccaneer Days, which bring out the pirate in all of us. I'm proud to live here, so bear in mind, some of these numbers could be a little bit inflated but I give it a nine on the activities and attraction scale, bringing us up to a grand total of 44. Next up, we're in the seaside community of Colwood on the western end of Squimalt Harbor. This seaside neighborhood has quite a bit of beauty and appeal, and I just think you can't fault living by the sea, although the Colwood of 20 or 30 years ago was quite different than what you see today. I remember thinking about Colwood as kind of being out in the sticks, quite rural, suburban, and a little bit patchy in spots. Some of those relics still exist today, but the new and emerging version of Colwood is definitely modern seaside living. So I give it a six for beauty and appeal. Transit and walkability are so-so. You have a walk score of 32 and a bike score of 41, but they are improving, especially with all that's happening at Royal Bay and the idea of a new commercial center emerging here that you can walk or bike to, that will have a dramatic impact over the next five to 10 years. For now, once again, it kind of feels like Colwood is just an extension of Langford, and the things that you need to walk or bike to are likely a drive away rather than a walk 
or bike away. That will change, but for now, it's a four. How about the homes here? Well, as soon as you say new, that doesn't necessarily mean inexpensive. And because there's such a huge volume of new construction going on in Colwood, that does lift the median sale price of a detached unit. So far this year, it's a million 75. But there are more approachable areas of Colwood with some 70s homes that come in well below a million dollars. So because of that and the makeup of townhome and condo options that continue to emerge, it's definitely on the more affordable end of the spectrum. I give it a 6.5. It's pretty quiet, sleepy, and suburban in Colwood. The latest CSI was 44, and I give it a 6.5. The schools in Colwood are pretty good. Wishart Elementary actually gets top marks, and the services are improving. Like this Quality Foods that they just opened in Royal Bay, there's a lot of exciting development happening in Colwood, and with that come a lot of new and convenient services. Previously, residents of Colwood would have to drive into Langford for their core necessities, but that's changing and changing quickly. School's okay, service is improving. I give it a 5.5. The attractions of Colwood are pretty special, but they're probably not places that residents are visiting every day of the week. Like historic Hatley Castle in behind me here, present day Royal Roads University, you're probably not gonna take a tour of the castle if you live in Colwood, but you may walk the grounds. In the same light, Fort Rod Hill and the Fiskard Lighthouse, National Historic Sites, amazing places to visit, probably not adding to your overall lifestyle of living in Colwood. Where you do see benefits is being by the sea and going down to Royal Bay Beach or Esquimalt Lagoon, although they can be quite busy because they really service all of the West Shore. Bear in mind, we do have a new extension of the Royal BC Museum coming to Royal Bay, so that's gonna give it a bit of a lift on the attraction side, I give it a five and a half, which brings us to a total of 34. But don't let that lower ranking fool you. Colwood has a lot of upside. Welcome to Langford. Based on 2021 census data, this was the fastest growing community in the entire province of British Columbia. With that development, there is a little bit of downside because to make way for new condos, new detached units, they're scraping hillsides, they're throwing stuff up very quickly maybe missing a little bit of foresight to develop true community feel, which means it's not the most beautiful community on our list today. I give it a 4.5. Everything is reasonably close, but it might not be as walkable or bikeable as other parts of Victoria. You have a walk score of 33, a bike score of 44. This is the land of parking lots, and the community is definitely set up to drive to the services, shops and stores that you need rather than walk to them. I'll give it a 5.5. Housing affordability here is pretty good, although with all the brand new subdivisions and brand new homes, that doesn't necessarily mean the detached units are that inexpensive and the detached median is just north of 1.1 million so far in 2023. Condos are actually some of the most affordable in all of Greater Victoria and the median is just over 530,000 so far this year. I'll give it a seven. It's a safe place to live, but it's not the safest and the crime severity index ranking in 2021 was 56. Although I would say if you're living in one of these brand new subdivisions like here in West Hills or up on Bear Mountain, you really have nothing to worry about. I'll give it a 5.5 on the safety rating. The schools are good in Langford and there are a lot of new families calling this home because of the affordability here. And on the services front, convenience is king. Everything that you need is right here in Langford and with the growing community comes a growing level of services available. I'll give it a 7.5. There is lots to do in Langford. The activities and attractions include things like here at West Hills Arena or Starlight Stadium, where you could come watch Pacific FC play or our junior football team, the West Shore Rebels. Across the road, you could go out and get on a paddleboard on Langford Lake or even out on Glen Lake. You could head up to Mount Finlayson, golf on Bear Mountain, or one of my favorite hikes up Mount Wells. There's lots to do here. Much of it is focused on outdoor activities like mountain biking, hiking, and sports. But usually every weekend, there's some event going on so I give it an eight, which brings us to a grand total of 38. Definitely set to improve, but with a community that's evolving at breakneck pace, there's definitely upside in Langford. Now, as you can see, we're in the district of Highlands. There's not much out here, but it is undeniably beautiful. Residents like it the way that it is, and they wanna preserve the thousand year old coastal forest that exists here. There's not a lot of homes, but there is a lot of beauty. I give it an 8.5 on beauty and appeal. Transit and walkability, you're really just driving into Langford if you need stuff. If you live in the Highlands, 
There are no sidewalks or bike lanes that I can think of. It's a goose egg. Is it affordable? Not really. The median detached sale price so far this year is north of $1.3 million. There really aren't a lot of properties that transact in the Highlands, and when they do, they're often more contemporary homes on significant acreage that pushes the price that much higher. So for me, I give affordability a two. I couldn't find any available information on a crime severity index ranking for the Highlands. I'm sure there are crimes that occur here on occasion, but because it's so sparsely populated and there just isn't much out here, I would be a little more concerned about bears and cougars, maybe even the odd mosquito or two. So throw some bear mace in your backpack, a bit of mosquito repellent, and you'll be good. It's a nine for me. Staying on theme, if you live in the Highlands, you will be driving out of the Highlands to get to all of the schools and services that you need. Although I'm told that there's a municipal office somewhere down this road in the forest, once again, there's just not much out here. There are no schools in the Highlands and the services are very limited. I'll give it a two just uh, for those of you that are watching this that live in the Highlands. I just want to bump the numbers up a little. Don't feel so bad. It's a great place to live. If you like to hike or mountain bike, you will love the Highlands. There is so much natural terrain to explore, getting up into the Gallon Range to Mount Work and Jocelyn Hill. It's just endless forest, and if you want to feel like you're a thousand miles away from civilization, this is the place to do it. I give it a seven for activities and attractions, which brings us up to a total of 28.5, which is kind of a low rank, but bear in mind, this list is about well-rounded communities. The Highlands isn't that, but it's spectacular if you love the outdoors and privacy. Just south of Colwood, and we end up in Machosen, where there hasn't been a lot of change over the last few years, and there probably won't be over the next few decades. Rolling hillsides, beautiful farmland, acreage properties, and coastal shoreline with beautiful beachfront. It's a pretty beautiful place to live. I give it an 8.5 for beauty and appeal. Machosen's pretty sparsely populated, and the core services that you need on a daily basis don't exist here. So it's difficult to give this a transit and walkability ranking. You're pretty much driving to everything that you need, so we'll give it a zero. Affordability suffers as a consequence of lack of availability and variety. As far as I'm aware, there are no townhomes or condos in all of Machosen. And because there's not a lot of resale property that comes up and people are buying and staying, the average price point is pushed that much higher. So far in 2023, the median to get into a detached home in Machosen is just shy of $1.3 million. And for that reason, I give it a three on housing affordability. This is a safe place to live. Unless your farm in Machosen has rabid goats that are hunting you by night, I wouldn't be worried about criminal activity. I'll give it a nine. Very little in Machosen by way of services available. There's the world famous My Chosen Cafe and definitely a few farm stands you could stop at, but most residents will be driving into Langford or Colwood for their daily necessities. As far as the schools go, I think that there's just one, uh, which is Hans Helgeson in behind me. And fittingly enough, I'll give My Chosen a one for schools and services. As a sleepy little community, there's not as much to do on the activities and attractions front, but there are community events, farmers markets, you can play golf at a nine hole course. And there's things to do outside, like head down to Whitty's Lagoon, which is one of the best beaches and parks in all of Greater Victoria. For me, I'll give it a 6.5, which brings us up to a total of 28. It's a beautiful place to live, but not as well-rounded as some of the other communities on our list today. The most westerly stop on our tour today is the sloping seaside community of Souk that sits on the Souk Basin and looks to the south towards the Olympic Mountain Range in Washington State as a beautiful seaside community with lots of access to the outdoors and protected green space. Souk is pretty beautiful and I give it a 7.5. You're gonna find yourself in your car more than on the Two Foot Express if you live in Souk and there's just not a lot of density around the main commercial center and the village core. It has a walk score of 12 and add to that that the major transit hubs like BC Ferries and the International Airport are way out on the peninsula and on a bad day could be an hour and a half away. And it's just not the best place to travel from. There are some buses that run from Souk all the way into Victoria, but overall, it's a two. It's the most affordable municipality on our list today. And the detached median in 2023 is just over 900,000 and the condo median is under 400,000. For that reason, it gets a 10 out of 10 for me. It has quite a rural and small town feel, but it's actually not the safest on our list today and comes in right in the middle of the pack on the crime severity index rankings at 56. I give it a 5.5. The schools aren't very well rated 
and as a small town that generally coincides with limited options and amenities. So the services here aren't as great and most residents find themselves driving into Langford to get the bulk of their groceries and major shopping items. You do really have all that you need in Souk, but it's just maybe not as convenient as some of the other places on our list today. So I give it a 3.5. There's no question that this is a nature lover's paradise and the activities and attractions are definitely focused on the great outdoors. Some of my favorite hikes in all of Greater Victoria are in Souk, like up Mount Manuel Quimper or out along the coast on the Juan de Fuca Marine Trail. We have incredible beaches, wildlife and parks like French Beach, Sombrio Beach, China Beach, Mystic Beach. I could go on and on. The coast looks like it's been that way for about a thousand years. Untouched, pristine and beautiful. You can surf in the winter, you can fish in the summer. I give it an eight, which brings us to a grand tally of 36.5. Maybe I'm being a bit harsh on Souk, but I will point out that because of the affordability being a 10 out of 10, I could see there being tremendous growth opportunities if you're considering a coastal community like Souk. Our penultimate stop of the day is the District of Oak Bay, running along the southeast coastline of Southern Vancouver Island. For that reason, it's one of the more beautiful places to live in Greater Victoria. It's picturesque. The neighborhood aesthetics come right out of a storybook. And from rocky bluffs to coastal forests, you can't beat it. It's a 10 out of 10 on beauty and appeal. Transit and walkability are great in Oak Bay. There's lots of little neighborhood pockets where you can walk to everything that you need, like here along Oak Bay Avenue. But there's also great transit routes. The walk score is 52, bike score is 67 and you're usually pretty close to everything that you need from your neighborhood. I give it an 8.5. Affordability is not good. There are very few townhouse options, select condo options, many of which are more luxury style with ocean views that are more expensive. And the detached homes here, which dominate the landscape, are expensive. Here in the uplands, the average last year was more than $3 million, and the median so far in 2023 is $1.75 million. Oak Bay is not affordable. It's a goose egg for affordability. No, this is not the rock wall for the Wilkinson Road Jail, and Oak Bay is a very safe place to live. Of all the CSI data that we looked at, this was the safest of our list, and in 2021, the Crime Severity Index was 28. Oak Bay is a 10 out of 10 on safety. We arguably have some of the best schools in all of Victoria here. Although that number is supported by the fact that some of the private schools are so highly ranking, like GNS in behind me, which gets an 8.9 from the Fraser Institute, the public institutions are also good. Willows is well ranked, as is Oak Bay High School. The services are never too far away from your home and there's great amenities in Oak Bay. We're also close to the Royal Jubilee Hospital, which is great for any urgent care that you require. It's a nine on schools and services. There's great parks and beaches to explore like right here at Cattle Point or in behind us at Willows Beach. You can fish right off the coastline here. There's two amazing golf courses that are the oldest in Victoria at VGC and Uplands. And there is some nightlife. There's nice restaurants along Oak Bay Avenue. Maybe it's not as exciting as a major city with a ton of different options, but there's still great places to dine and enjoy some time with your friends and family. Community events also great, the Oak Bay Tea Party, car shows along the Ave, and the night market. I'll give it a nine for activities and attractions, which brings us up to a grand total of 46.5. Will the last stop beat it? Let's find out. Last up, but definitely not least, is the city of Victoria, the capital of BC, and also the seventh densest city in Canada with just over 91,000 residents. There's a reason that people flock here and it's consistently ranked one of the most livable cities in the entire world. As far as beauty and appeal goes, this is pretty tough to beat. We line the southern end of Vancouver Island and there's beautiful ocean vistas from many of the southern communities of Victoria. And although the city faces some challenges and there are a few patchy spots you may wish to avoid, on the whole, this is an incredibly beautiful place to live. It is the garden city after all, and because of the climate here, we have pretty lush gardens just about year round and beautiful tree-lined streets. It has a storied history and the British influence that started here in 1843 still lives on today. And there are monuments throughout the city like the iconic Inner Harbor that gives Victoria a very special feel. Overall, I'll give it a nine for beauty and appeal. If you like the idea of availability of car alternatives, this is the place to be. Walk score, bike score, and transit score are all above 90 in the city of Victoria. 
and new things like a network of bike lanes, as well as this being the central transit hub for many of the major bus routes, means that living in Victoria is extremely walkable. Add to this that you have a number of little villages and communities like James Bay, Cook Street Village, or Fernwood, where you can walk to most of what you need from your doorstep. I'll give it a 10 for transit and walkability. There's a broad spectrum of home prices here, and for that reason, affordability lands somewhere in the middle. There are still neighborhoods in Victoria where you can find a detached home for less than a million bucks, but here in Rockland, in contrast to that, you're more likely gonna find homes listed for more than $2 million. All the same, the median of a detached home so far in 2023 is just over $1.2 million. And because Victoria is the densest community on our list today, there are tons of condo options, which means there are more affordable condo options. The median so far in 2023 is 550,000. And for that reason, I'll give Victoria a five. Unfortunately, the city doesn't have the best reputation on safety. And in 2021, the crime severity index ranking of 148 makes Victoria one of the more dangerous cities to live in the province of British Columbia. In real terms and by my own experience, it doesn't feel like an unsafe place and having lived here for the vast majority of my life, I know that just by common sense, there's a few areas that you probably want to avoid. Like other parts of North America, unfortunately there is an ongoing drug epidemic and an underworld of criminal activity linked to it that's increasing the danger level in our city. There needs to be solutions and answers to it, as well as the unhoused population that unfortunately gets stigmatized and thrown into this batch associated with crime when that often isn't the case. All the same, Victoria, by way of its ranking in 2021, gets a two for me on crime and safety. The schools are pretty well ranked, and there are lots of options in both public and private categories. I'm standing in front of South Park School. No, not that South Park. This one was founded in 1895, and it's right across the street from Beacon Hill Park. A pretty cool place to go to school, in my opinion. As far as services go, because this is the center of Greater Victoria and the commercial center as well, all the services that you need are scattered throughout, whether they're right in the downtown core or in one of these more peripheral communities hospitals, professional services, grocery stores and amenities, all that you need is here. I'll give it a 9.5 for schools and services. There's a reason why people flock from all around the world to visit the capital of BC, and that's because of the amazing things to do here. Although some of them can be a little bit touristy, like walking the seawall in the Inner Harbor or popping into the Empress, it doesn't mean that you can't go back and enjoy those things again and again. I find myself as a local going into the Royal BC Museum or going back to Beacon Hill Park time and time again and just finding a new place to explore and experience. Aside from those tourist attractions, there's also thriving nightlife in Victoria and we have the most restaurants per capita of any city in the entire country. There's also amazing arts and entertainment here and whether it's going to a local music festival or to a show at the Royal Theatre, there's always something to make a night of. You guessed it, it's a 10 out of 10 for activities and attractions, which brings us to a grand total of 45.5. By now we've crowned a winner for the best place to live in Victoria, BC. Let's find out if the locals agree. What's the best place to live in Victoria, BC? No, well, it's not in Victoria, it's in Sydney. Okay, so Greater Victoria, I should say. Greater Victoria, yeah, so Sydney, BC. And why do you say Sydney? Uh, Probably because I've lived there for, for the last 30 years, so okay. I like it. And anything specific about it's the just, reasons you like it? It's a small town atmosphere. Uh, it's along the water. You can walk along the water really nice and stuff, you know, so I just like it there. Amazing. That's great. Okay, I'm here with Ben. Ben, where do you think the best place to live in Victoria is? I, I think being in Victoria is uh, is quite nice. I like the fact that I moved here two years ago, I sold my car, I haven't okay. thought about it since, okay. and I'm able to get everywhere nice and easy. Maybe it's not the cheapest to live here, I moved here from Alberta, so cost of living is definitely higher, but gotcha. just being where you are is... So like walkability, being close to like restaurants, nightlife, that kind of thing? Totally, yeah, 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 I can go to eat whenever, um, everything is nice and close within a 30 minute walk at least. If you... What's the main difference between here and Alberta, would you say? I would say... Well, between the weather yeah. and just, I think people are, I feel like people are happier out here. I don't know. I think, I think people are just in a better mood most of the time. So I agree with you, man. Yeah. Well, thanks for yeah. your time. I appreciate yeah, of course. it. Okay. I'm here with B. B. where do you think the best place to live in Victoria is? Um, definitely Saanich. And why do you say Saanich? 
Um, I'd say it's a little bit more affordable than the rest of the city. The schools are good, it's safe, there's lots of services, and it has the natural beauty that the rest of Victoria has. What's your favorite like natural beauty part of Saanich, would you say? Probably Holly Dean Beach. Okay, great answers. Thank you so much. Where is the best place to live in Victoria? It's Saanich. And what makes you say Saanich? Uh, I live near the country, like just about in the country, so it's really fresh air, beautiful. It's just my place to be. And would you say like Saanich is also fairly well-rounded? Like there's lots of services available, or is it mostly the beauty that you like about it? I think there's pretty much services available. There's maybe it could improve with the um, the rec center yeah. a little bit, but uh, generally, like I do a lot of outdoor walking and sports, so it's really complimentary. The the environment's really good. Amazing! Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Where is the best place to live in Greater Victoria? Okay, I'm gonna. I live in Saanich. So that's the best place. And why do you say Saanich? Well, because it's close to the city. It's close to rural. It's got access to Highway One and Highway Seventeen. Easy access. Amazing. Anything else you like about Saanich? Uh, yeah, I, I, I like the parks mm. yeah, and the rec centers. It's, it's just a nice place to live. Amazing. Thank you for your time. Where is the best place to live in Greater Victoria? So I've grown up in Saanich my whole life. Uh, I love it there because it's pretty central. You can kind of get anywhere. The, yeah. the bus is there and then you have like the city downtown nearby. Scoot to the ferries real quick but that's my personal preference. I, I, I live in Saanich too, but I really like Fernwood because I, like okay. I like being so kind of- Victoria. Victoria, yeah. yeah. I like being kind of close to downtown, but still a little bit removed, not right downtown. So like a little bit more vibrant than Saanich? Vibrant, yeah, because like I grew up in Gordon Head and I found that it was, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's just the memories of childhood, but it's not very walkable right. at this point. But here it is, like we live close to uptown now and it's very, yeah. it's super walkable, so. Okay, amazing. Anything else you want to add about Saanich or Victoria? Uh, can't go wrong with anywhere in, in Victoria. It's awesome, yeah. awesome place to live. It's place really place the best. best. Like everywhere yeah. is good. Everywhere totally is good. agree. Yeah. Amazing, yeah. thank yeah. you guys yeah. so much. Okay, I'm here with Karen. Karen, where do you think the best place to live in Victoria is? I would say Saanich. And why do you say Saanich? Just the variety of places in Saanich, the like, smaller places, bigger places. So is that just on the housing front or overall variety in the area? Variety in the area. Okay. So you got some farmland, you got lots of trails. And it's beautiful. And it's beautiful. They, we, the whole city is. Okay, another one for Saanich. Thank you so much, Karen. Okay, I'm here with Shannon and Claire. Where do you two think the best place to live in Victoria is? Oh. And do you have different answers? I would definitely say probably um, Fairfield, I think that's a good place to live. Okay, so we would call that like Victoria. So yeah, as part of Victoria, but yeah, go on. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's just like such a nice, friendly neighborhood and it's not like, like it's not too expensive, I don't think. It's kind of a mix between like Oak Bay and Saanich-ish, kind of. I think it's a good area. <laughs> okay, and how about you? Um, yeah, Victoria is definitely nice. I'd say, I like Saanich a lot. I think it's it's good too. And what do you like about Saanich? Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm just in Saanich more often. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so just because you're maybe more familiar with it? Yeah. Yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> okay, amazing. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Okay, I'm here with Kate. Where is the best place to live in Greater Victoria in your mind? Uh, I believe it's Bear Mountain. And why do you say Bear Mountain? I moved here from the lower mainland and Bear Mountain has everything. It's got golf, tennis, the rec center, hiking, restaurants, bar, everything. It has it all. It's its own little community and it's got a lot of outdoor activities and stuff to go along with it, right? Yes. Amazing. Anything else you want to say about Bear Mountain or even Langford? Uh, Langford is a very up and coming community and uh, it's growing like crazy. There's lots of construction, so. Upside maybe too. Uh, upside. If you want to buy in Langford, maybe it could see values increase over the next few years. Yeah. There's lots, they're building new schools, there's new daycares, there's more shopping, more restaurants, so yeah. It's evolving quickly. That's right, it's a good place to live. Amazing, thank you so much for your time, really appreciate it. Okay, I'm here with Autumn. Autumn, where is the best place to live in Greater Victoria? I would probably say Saanich, just because I'm a university student, so it's closest for me and kind of just can get around really easy. I also love Sydney though. Okay, so if you were to pit the two against each other and you had dealer's choice, would you pick Sydney or would you pick Saanich? I think I'd pick Saanich. I prefer to be a little closer to downtown and those areas. So, so outside of like accessibility, are there any other reasons you like Saanich? 
I think the people are great. There's a bit more to do than up in Sydney. Um, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm here with Campbell. Campbell, where is the best place to live in Greater Victoria? Depends on what you're looking for. Oak Bay is probably the best if you're looking for beautiful scenery right by the ocean, but it is very expensive to live there. I would say Saanich is probably the best for overall balance of all the best aspects. Like it's well-rounded is what you're well -rounded, saying? Well-rounded, yeah. It's, it's affordable, but it's also beautiful. It has a ton of the parks throughout the island are in Saanich. You get access to the Galloping Goose from almost anywhere in there, so you can bike everywhere. So good access to transit, beautiful, more affordable on price point. Anything else you like about it? You're able to get to a lot of schools from there really easily, actually. So if you have kids, that's anywhere you live in Sanchez, you're able to get to a school really easily. Amazing. Thank you so much, Campbell. Appreciate your time, dude. Absolutely, Alex. Thank you. So you've heard from me and you've heard from some other locals. And by now, hopefully you have a better feeling of the types of areas that fit your lifestyle and needs in Greater Victoria. But ultimately, wherever you go, you'll find warm, welcoming communities, incredibly friendly people, and there really isn't a bad pick on this list. I continue to believe that Victoria, BC is the best place to live in Canada. And for that reason, it's a great place to get invested in the real estate market. If you have questions on that front, my info is down below. And be sure to subscribe for more great videos on our beautiful city. We'll see you next time.